I've worn a Speedo at the beach. Should you? Let's talk about that. Good method, Omura. <laughs> really? My lip is still in recovery mode. Thank you for not uh, dousing the comments with discussions about it. Uh, thank you. Please and thank you. I do appreciate your concern. Okay, now you could go to the beach like a normal person without advice and everything's gonna just be screwed up from there. Or you could ask us questions before you go to the beach and everything's gonna be screwed up from there. Okay. Okay, so we filled in some questions via our Facebook and other places on the internet. Carrie Johnson asks, when is it acceptable for a man to wear a thong slash speedo at the beach, on the beach? Use any situation you can think of. Well, first of all, Carrie, uh, very important to distinguish between thong and speedo. These are two different pieces of swimwear. The thong is never acceptable for a man under any circumstances on the beach. <laughs> Any, anywhere, really. Uh, the Speedo is only acceptable if you are diving, and I've never seen a diving board at the beach, so not acceptable at the beach. Rhett's going with a big ax. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, disagree with you a little bit here. Uh, not about the diving board at the beach, never seen one either. Um, but from experience, there are situations where I think you can wear a Speedo. I was in the Dominican Republican vacationing, I said Dominican Republican. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. You didn't catch it's that. It's a political party. I was. <laughs> oh gosh, something came out of your nose. I know you're experiencing, I don't know if you call that in the slow-mo cam, <laughs> oh, but there was a no, bubble. I can't laugh, it hurts my lip too bad. <laughs> there was a bubble that I came out of your <laughs> left nostril and I saw it, I saw it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you can, maybe you can pause on that. Oh my goodness. I don't recommend running that back. I need to get my coffee away from you. <laughs> I'm going to get cold sores in my coffee. Because my mouth doesn't work properly, stuff's coming out of my nose. Yeah. I'm not going to apologize for that. They are connected. That. I'm also not going to apologize for saying Dominican Republican <laughs> or wearing a speedo in the Dominican Republic when I was on vacation with my wife. I was wearing a normal bathing suit, laying yeah. out on the beach. Yeah, laying out. I look around. Every guy there is uh, a diver from Spain. It turns out. Oh, this really? is the place we were at. They were all wearing Speedos. Huh. And after about a couple of hours, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this too. I, and for some reason, I was wearing underwear under my board shorts. Yeah, gotta do that. I never do that, but I did it this day. Yeah. And then I didn't even tell Christy. I just, all of a sudden, I started taking my pants off. <laughs> and were they, and I, were they whitey tighties? They were, they were tighties, but they weren't whiteies. Okay, that's... So they looked kind of like Speedos. Good distinction. And then uh, Christy looks at me, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, getting well, my tighties. I'm getting... Everyone's wearing a Speedo, I'm gonna do it too. And you know what? It was great. Did you dive off anything? I didn't dive off of anything. Um, so I think my answer is, if everyone else on the beach is already wearing a Speedo, then you can wear a Speedo. But don't be that one guy. Okay, all right, don't set a precedent. Marshall Vincent Bender, great name, says, what should you do if your shorts fall off? I assume he's st still in beach mode here. Yeah, so. Waves I, knock them off. Right, you're, you're in the shallows and your shorts come, on, come, come off. <laughs> well, you gotta own this. Uh, Vincent, Marshall Vincent, what you gotta do is you gotta own it, you gotta make eye contact with everybody on the beach, and then you gotta salute them, and then you turn around and walk confidently like Godzilla entering the water. Back into and, the ocean? Back into the ocean, and I mean until your head disappears. And then once your head goes under at a walking speed, no swimming. You can die. At that point, you can either just stay under forever, or <laughs> what I would do is swim down the beach. <laughs> ah. Swim down the beach under the water, and then come out and yell, towel please! So you don't, so you'd have to walk, okay. So you don't, you have to walk down the beach naked to get, so you're further no, from no. your camp. No, you're, no, you're swimming under the water into a different, and then you're sticking your head out of the water and getting towel, please. Okay, Hannah Azel He asks, what's the best way to get sunscreen on my back without asking someone else to do it? It hmm. could be awkward. Uh, my answer is, find someone who's gotten someone to rub sunscreen on their back and then rub your back against their back. Uh, oh, I like that. I'm not gonna try it. Okay, it's time for our first Vacay Gone Cray Cray reenactment. Here's how it works. You submit yes. your story of your vacation mishap at vacaygonecraycray.com to us, and then we go through, we find our favorites, and we reenact those every Thursday on Good Mythical Morning. Now, just a point of clarification. This first reenactment, the narration that you hear is taken directly from the story. So the story you give us is where we find all of the inspiration yes. to then act out your story. So, are Here you ready? Is our first one. Hmm. 
My husband and I have had many horrible trips in Nebraska, but this is probably my most favorite. We don't know anyone from Nebraska. Do you even know anyone in Nebraska? No. Nope. Me neither. It just so happens to be on the way when we drive up to Fargo, North Dakota to visit family. So we stopped and got some cheese curds. Let's stop and get some cheese curds. Because, well, they are deliciousness. Well, they are deliciousness. I'll take some squeaky cheese curds. My husband ordered ranch to go with him. And give me some ranch. They gave him buttermilk ranch. They gave me buttermilk ranch. He was already in a bad mood just purely because we were in Nebraska and just waiting for something horrible to happen. Any minute now. Anyways, he's dipping his curds in this buttermilk ranch and it tasted so bad. This Nebraskan ranch tastes so bad. That he threw the ranch out the window. Please note that we don't condone littering unless you're in Nebraska. And a ranch flew back in the window and hit him straight in the face. I have never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> I laughed so hard we had to pull over so I could change my pants because... I peed myself! I peed myself! Pull over! For at least the next 100 miles, my husband shouted out the window, I hate Nebraska! I hate Nebraska! I hate Nebraska! Just for the record, I love Nebraska. Love it. One of my favorite states. One of my favorite states. Now, I haven't ever received ranch in the face in Nebraska. But why is that Nebraska's fault? It's not. It's not. It's okay? the cheese curds fault. Okay, guys, listen, we want to make sure you're submitting your crazy vacation mishap stories to us at vacaygonecraycray.com. We're going to pick our favorites and reenact them on subsequent episodes. And when you submit your story, you're automatically entered for a chance to win a vacation redo up to $10,000 courtesy of Choice Hotels. Thanks, Choice Hotels. You know what day it is. It's Thursday. And Thursday means mail. Dear Rat and Link and the rest of the GMM team. Hey. My daughter and I love your show. We think your mix of interesting research, willingness to try almost anything, and your good natured sense of humor is great. Makes for a fantastically entertaining good time. And that. For a class project, my daughter was asked to create a new, School. never before heard instrument. The idea struck us both. Un flute a pet. Which translates oh, into a flute of farts. Oh. Holly attends a French school. Say Canada. Made of whoopee cushion reeds and cardboard tubes of various lengths, pitches, it plays a diatonic scale in one octave. Oh. Sounds like fun. So this is Sean and Holly Crabble from Canada. Crabble. All right, now my lip's messed up, so I cannot play this. Uh, so yeah, please. You're, 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 get you your have, lip away even though this. I'm a pan flute master, let me play this, mm, and you play that. Link. Okay. Breaking out all the skills today. <laughs> Okay, it's very satisfying. Now let's get this back. All right, so, uh, yeah, it's very far delicious. All right, here's what we're gonna do now. Actually, you hold this. All right, so no more mythical male boulder. That thing has been bronzed. So now, there are uh, different pitches. I can't do that with my butt. We're gonna present the male uh, that we choose each week on this uh, Lazy Susan device. What are we gonna call it? According to Josh, Joe O, he suggests uh, you should call it the Mythical Susan because the thing's actual name is Lazy Susan. Mythical Male Susan. So we will call it the Mythical Male Susan. And just, we'll just give it a special moment in the sun right now. 
This is its 15 seconds of fame. You know, I've always wondered what it would be like to make music with my farts, but I keep making the same note, or at least just a couple of different notes, and that's a problem. But, but now, now, our lives have changed, thanks to this amazing fart flute device. Flute of farts. It's a flute of farts, people. Coming to a mythical male Susan near you. Make farts in along one diatonic scale. I don't know how many diatonic scales there are, but when it comes to farts, there's only one for me, and it involves lots of cardboard. Okay. All right. We, now for the uh, until next Thursday, this is gonna hold the place of honor over on the filing cabinet. So we're gonna nice. move it over there. If you send us something and we and we feature it on the show. Now you're gonna win a signed Good Mythical Morning poster, also available at retinlink.com slash store. Thanks for liking and commenting on this episode. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Nicholas from Wichita, Kansas with Rhett and Link. Time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Send this stuff to our P.O. box and it may find a special place on the Mythical Mail, Susan. Uh, click through to Good Mythical More, where we play Rhett and Linkopoly, an amazing game that was mailed to us. Join us for that. Peas versus carrots, or carrots versus peas. I will go second. Okay, I'm going to go with carrots because they can be routinely used to lead a mule. Are you going first? I just went. And carrots is my thing. I'm committed to carrots. That was such a weak argument, I didn't even know if you'd gone yet. That leaves you with peas. Unless you really like carrots, and then we're in agreement. Well, carrots are pretty good, but yeah, peas, because... peas are pretty good, too. I mean, this it was, you pick up one pea, and it's actually multiple peas in a pod. Can you leave How it? many carrots do you pick up when you pick up a carrot? One. How many peas do you pick up when you pick up a pea? Can you pod. lead a mule with it? Have you tried to lead a mule with peas? Have you ever smelled a mule? I've led a mule to water and I tried to make him drink. Peas, on the other hand, add a letter and it's please. It's very polite. Carrot, add a H and it's charrot. Or carrot. You can add it in two different places. Better than peas, you add an H to peas and it's just peas. Peas win. My favorite peas are- I could are drown the, myself in uh, peas. They're brand name Le Sueur. Why would you call anything you want to eat Le Sueur? But I think it's, it's French. French. It means La Pise. <laughs>